What you are about to view is a talk given by Marine Captain Arnold Swartz at the Jewish Museum on Miami Beach on December 7, 2010, the 69th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. Arnold is 94 years old and one of the few remaining witnesses left to talk about this infamous event. Please enjoy this priceless moment. Went out and visited all the sentries and everything. We came back and I was having breakfast at about 7.30. Got through, went out on the Lanai. Lanai is a porch. I would be relieved of duty on December 7th at 8 o'clock <coughs> on the flying buildings. And we hated to get out to work on our own pistols, so we reported for duty. I borrowed one of the sergeant of the guard's pistols, signed him a chip, and I said, I'll return it the next morning. Well, when I got through at breakfast, I went out on the Lanai, and I called the field music over the bugler. I said, here, chop, chop, fast. Run this down to the size of the guy and get back my receipt, my chip. And he started running down the Lanai to go to the size of the guy. And I looked up in the sky, and I see dozens and dozens of planes. Now, the Army Air Force, in those days, it wasn't the U.S. Air Force. The United States Army Air Force. They had been on maneuvers on Saturday. So, so I was a captain of Air Force. They probably haven't had guts to be even more brickless. All of a sudden, one of these planes banked over. And there's a big red meatball. A big red meatball is a sign from, of the Japanese. And all of a sudden they're diving and you start seeing a little project come. So I scream for the field music, bring my blankety blank pistol back in. So there were so many things that happened like this. It was just a slip of the th my mind. And they blamed Admiral Kimmel and General Short. And as far as I'm concerned, I was privy to all of the messages that came in. I didn't see one message that said that we were in danger from the Japanese. We knew from the newspaper that the ambassador from Japan was due to meet with the Secretary of State on Sunday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And the attack came before that 1 o'clock came. So there was all kinds of follow-ups. We had the uh, Oh, one officer that had been lax in his duties, so he was given special weekend notice. Fellow by the name of Lieutenant Lockwood, Lockwood. Yami. And he had to go up on one of the mountains there with radar for weekend duty. Well, at 7 o'clock in the morning, they're due to get off at 8 o'clock Sunday morning. Seven o'clock in the morning, he sent his landlines down, landlines of telephone. And they went down, and then this radar report comes to him that these planes, a bunch of planes are coming in, and they weren't giving a signal. But he had no way of communicating that information to anybody, because he didn't have a landline. No good semaphore him. They couldn't see that far. So it was just a mess of all of, of difficulties that arose. And some things that happened. My wife and I were married on October 26, six weeks before Pearl Harbor. And one of our guests was a commander, Saul Iswith, from South Carolina, U.S. Naval Academy graduate. And he was aboard the USS Utah, which is a target ship. It was a, a, a battle wagon, a battleship, which was past its days. So they remove all the superstructure. They put big, big four inch by 20 feet boards on there. And the planes would go up and they would drop practice bombs. Practice 
bombing of Utah. So he was a command run of Utah, which was this thing. And as a wedding gift, he took two of these practice bombs. He had his electricians make lamps of them, which he was going to give to my wife and myself as wedding gifts. He said the, to the divers who were going down to that place, he said, now you're going to go down to the Utah, and he drew him a diagram of where the electrician mate's lockers was. And he said, you're going to pick up these two lamps and bring them up. If you don't find them, don't come up. Boy, you put them up and they work beautifully. Now this is one of the things we're going to, I'm going to donate to the museum. A speech in which he told about all the Jewish heroes and medal honors. Now, I am not a hero. I don't allow anybody to call me a hero. I just happen to be in the wrong place at the right time. But to me, the heroes are the ones who threw themselves on top of grenades to keep their fellows from being blown up, or the ones who went running out in, in the midst of fight and dragged in wounded come. They're heroes. I'm no hero and I won't be called a hero. And in this book, it says, Captain Al D. Swartz, 27, United States Marine Corps of Brockton, Massachusetts, received the Silver Star for outstanding heroism in action at Pearl Harbor, Midway, Talaji, and Guadalcanal. I have, I have some things here. These are two Japanese pistols. This was made in Japan. Because you'll find the expression, it's a piece of crap. <laughs> Junk. That was issued to the non-commissioned officers. But the Japanese officers had this pistol, which was made in Belgium. It says, I'll find a Pistols, pistols, you don't want. Want. pistols you don't want. Beautiful, 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 beautiful instrument.